Today we will wrap up the content for this class by talking about the method of virtual work which is in section 10.1 of chapter 10. Okay. So uh, I'll begin with an introduction of what virtual work means and then um, uh, introduce you to the principle of virtual work and then solve some example problems that end with uh, learning how to find um, how efficient a machine is. So, uh, from a definition point of view, virtual work, you know, um, uh, I'm going to define it shortly, but the idea really here is that it's a method, and it's a method that is used to solve for problems involving machines uh, that make it more efficient, and it is more efficient than using the conventional equilibrium analysis that we have been using so far especially in systems that involve a uh, connection between rigid bodies. So for example, look at this case here. Um, you have uh, a situation where you have a repair truck parked on the road. It has this um, mechanical arm that can be raised to a certain height. And you have an engineer here uh, working to repair um, an electrical system. Right? Uh, so this is a machine. And it turns out that under equilibrium conditions, uh, the various forces uh, that are being applied, uh, uh, for various external forces, for example, uh, that are being applied, are better found by using this idea of uh, or the method of the virtual work. Okay, so uh, the principle of virtual work uh, is the following: It states that if you have a particle or a rigid body or a system of rigid bodies that are in equilibrium under various forces um, and this object like the particle is given a small virtual displacement so virtual means it's, uh, it's just a theoretical displacement it's not an actual one so it's something that you apply in order to solve the problem uh, and it's not something that is physically really being done um, uh, to the system then the total work done by the external forces uh, during that displacement is zero. So this is the principle. It involves two new concepts here: the virtual concept, and of course now we're going to also look at work, right? Um, and so let's look at. Uh, let's begin by looking at work, right? By the way, this this technique or this method was developed by Bernoulli, who is a very famous uh, engineer, and he developed it in the late 18th century. So let's begin by the idea of work and look at what is the work done by a force. Right? Um, for those of you who are familiar with it, uh, that's great. So let me just introduce you, uh, introduce it, reintroduce it here in the context of uh, what we want to do, which is the principle of virtual work. So think about this case here that I am, um, um, you know, uh, uh, we have an origin at point O, and we have an object uh, A uh, uh, at a distance R from the origin and I'm applying a force F on this object A and due to that force F the object moves from A to A dash right? and so um, it has moved uh, a vector distance dr that's shown out here and in this context uh, the definition of uh, uh, work done is that it's a scalar product of the force applied and the displacement dr right? so it is uh, du equals so du equals f, which is a vector, times uh, and cross product with dr, which is another vector. Okay. Now you can see that uh, the work done itself is a scalar. Okay, it can have positive or negative sign depending on uh, what f dot dr gives you, and its uh, units in SI systems are newton meter. So it's the same as energy units, right? Uh, which is a joule. Newton meter is one joule. Okay, so so that's our basic introduction to work uh, done by a force. It is the dot product or scalar product of f dot dr. So let's look at uh, f dot dr more carefully in the context of this uh, of this figure here, right? So if I um, if I uh, uh, write down the projection of the displacement vector dr in the direction of the force as a term like this ds cos alpha right so here is dr okay um, and it's projected along the direction of my force 
and that's my projected uh, uh, magnitude and that is ds cos alpha then the work done is nothing but f times ds cos alpha right? so that's what it is so you can also think of work as the product of force and the component of displacement in the direction of the force and that's a consequence of the fact that we are talking about a scalar quantity uh, that is a result of a dot product between two vectors right? so scalar can be thought of as uh, the magnitude of one vector multiplied by the projection of the other vector onto this vector so that's what we have here okay. so depending on the value of this angle alpha right uh, here of course we've written, written down the general form but there are some uh, uh, there are three interesting or special cases based on the value of alpha right the first one you know so remember du is f ds cos alpha so let's look at the case when alpha equals zero. So here we know that cos alpha will be one, and so your uh, your work done is now F D S, and it's a positive quantity, and this is happening when the force and the displacement are along the same direction. Okay. Second case is when alpha is a pi or 180 degrees. And in this case, now you see that D U equals negative F D S. That means the work done is negative because the force and the displacement are in opposite directions and we will see an example of this later on when we solve uh, a problem as an exercise today case 3 is when the force and the displacement are perpendicular to each other that means alpha equals pi by 2 and here the work done is 0 again a very important example or a very important case because this happens uh, quite frequently that your force and the displacement are perpendicular to each other. So now, um, uh, let's as an example think about you know the work done by the weight of a body. Okay, so this is weight of a body W. So remember W is nothing but mass times acceleration, so mg, right? And it's acting downward. So let's say that your body uh, G uh, is where the center of gravity of your body is and its weight is acting downwards there and the body moves uh, under some force uh, and the force is of course this this one right here to the point g g dash right so what is the total work done well you can see here that the total work done is basically going to be the product of your force which is w times the projection of the distance that's traveled in the direction of the force which is nothing but dy here Right. So, so your work done is du, uh, work done du is nothing but w dy, and and so you can see uh, that in the case of uh, you know the weight of a body, um, it's the vertical displacement that tells you how much work is going to be done by the weight, yeah. and so this is so it can be positive or negative now depending on whether your body is falling down or going up, right? Okay. So let's now look at some examples where the force does not do work, and um, and we have uh, you know we have three conditions here. So let's go back and look at this. So I'm going to write down du equals f dot dr. So let's think of examples where force does not do work. So that means uh, how can you create situations where the result of this is going to be zero? Well immediately you see that one uh, we already saw one case where alpha equals 90 degrees that means f is perpendicular to dr right so that's case one or situation one uh, situation two is when dr equals zero that means you're applying a force but there's no displacement right no displacement so that gives you and then the case three is when the net force itself is zero that means that even though you might have a displacement the net force is actually zero and so um, you don't have any work done so those are three cases so that's the case here uh, here dr equals zero in this case alpha equals 90 and this is when sigma f equals zero and um, as an example of uh, you know uh, of forces and forces that do not do work uh, let's look at uh, the situation here you know we have a crane that is lifting a box 
and uh, you know putting it onto uh, onto its bed so that it can go and refill it uh, with with the material that uh, might need to be delivered right so the crane is moving the load so now think about the situation where you know you have um, uh, let's say we want to calculate or uh, find out um, uh, uh, if any work is being done um, by by uh, the boom here which is this arm when I'm just holding on to the weight right so uh, the weight is uh, it has been lifted and now you are basically uh, you know in equilibrium and the weight is not going up or down so there is no change it's not going up or down and now you want to find out what the work being done by the boom is well if the weight is not going up or down then we know that uh, W, um, the work done by the weight, W dot dr is equal to be 0 because this weight done, uh, the, the displacement in the vertical direction is going to be 0. So there is no, uh, no work being done by the weight of the load. Right? Uh, similarly, think about the situation where, um, um, where the weight moves, but it moves um, parallel to the ground right so the crane is you know kind of uh, it has lifted it up and now it wants to rotate it and put it on its bed and so during the rotation now uh, the displacement so if I plot let's say this is my ground here and this is my load um, here and I'm going to kind of move it horizontal to the earth to location here right and my weight is acting downwards. So you see now that in this case alpha equals 90 degrees. So there is actually no weight done, no work done by the weight. Right? Again, because now alpha is 90, and so even though there is a displacement, um, you actually don't end up doing any work. D u equals zero in this case. Right? So so these are ways in which uh, you have to look at uh, specific forces and see what work they're doing. Of course. Uh, as an entire system, uh, clearly there is um, uh, there are forces that are doing work, and so uh, and but but what we are uh, talking about here is looking at a specific force such as the weight, and looking to see if it is doing any work uh, under the conditions that um, you are evaluating. Okay. Okay. So let's now learn to apply this principle of virtual work uh, in a more quantitative manner by looking at the principle again. And seeing how to implement it. So let's think about particle A here, right? And it is being acted upon by several forces F1, F2, and all the way to Fn. Now we're going to imagine that A undergoes a small virtual displacement, right? So what uh, again, the virtual displacement is something that is is a theoretical for you. Uh, so you're not actually moving the particle, but you're just saying, okay, you know, what happens if I move the particle by to, to position A prime, which is a distance delta R, right? Uh, vector distance delta R, excuse me. So uh, now what we want to evaluate is what is the virtual work done here? Well, let's look at it. So what is our work done here? Du is going to be the sum of uh, uh, the work done by each force, right? So I have F1 delta R, uh, or let me write F1 delta R plus F2 dot delta R. So these are all dot products plus Fn dot delta R. Right? And you can see that since our displacement is the same for each force because it's acting on particle A, I can I can uh, simplify this by taking all the forces, uh, the vector forms of all the forces. N and the dot product with delta R. And so this is sigma F I dot delta R. This is summation that signifies the summation of all the forces. So now you see what the principle says. It says that du equals zero, right? If sigma F I equals zero because we have made sure that there is a virtual uh, displacement here delta r which is not zero so that means um, uh, the the work done is going to be zero if the net 
summation of all the vector forces sums to zero. Right? So this is the principle of virtual work that your resultant force R, which is the summation of all the vector forces that are acting on the on the particle is zero, then uh, then uh, your total work done will be zero. So the principle says that for a particle in equilibrium, which as you know means that the net forces are zero, the total virtual work of forces acting on the particle is zero for any virtual displacement and that's what we ended up proving here, right? And so that's what the principle is. So now let's see, you know, uh, how we can actually utilize this principle to solve some problems. Right? So here's the problem we're going to solve. Um, the principle is useful, extremely useful, when we are talking about machines, uh, which, for example, can be a connection of several rigid bodies. Uh, this is one example shown here. We have a vice, and what's happening here is that. Uh, your vice is actually applying a load on this block here, this block of wood, and trying to compress it through uh, through your load that you're applying here at, at point P, the load P that is being applied at point C rather, right? So ACB is your vice. So clearly what's going to happen is that as I push down here, this moves in this direction, and my vice is actually going to kind of change its angle, right, as I, as I start compressing the block. Okay? So um, so our goal here is now to uh, to find out the force on the wooden block, right? So that's this right here, due to my applied force P. So now, although we are working with the principle of virtual work, our first step still remains the same. We know need to draw the free body diagram of uh, of the vice, right? Uh, and so let's do that first, and then we will apply the method of virtual work here. Okay, um, so here's the free body diagram uh, of the of the vice, and um, so let's go through it uh, step by step. So at A, you have uh, reaction forces A AY and AX. Okay, so X along the X AX along the X direction and Y is AY. Uh, note my coordinate system Y and X are centered at uh, at A. And now, um, um, uh, since I'm drawing my free body diagram, I free up um, uh, all the supports and reaction forces. So I freed up A, so I have these two forces. At B, I have a normal force acting due to contact with the surface below. Um, uh, and then there is a reaction force from the block acting at, uh, at B, right? And I call it Q. So our goal is really to find Q. Now make a note of the other things here. So you can say that uh, this is position y1, and then after I apply my load, this is position y2. Similarly, this can be position x1, and then after displacement uh, or after compression, it goes to position x2. Okay. So uh, so let's let's think about what's going on here now. What we want to be able to do is using the method of uh, virtual work, we want to be able to solve this problem. So what has been applied here is is the problem has been set up with the idea of virtual work in mind. So our original position of our vice was A B C, um, and then I I introduce a virtual displacement delta X B, which is basically going from X one to X two, and so that changes my angle of the vice here theta by a small value delta theta. It drops my height of uh, position C from y one to y two. And it extends the position of x b from uh, of, of of point b from x b to x b plus delta x b. Right. So that's my virtual work here. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to write down. Uh, uh, remember, we want to write down uh, the total work done d u uh, should be zero according to the principle of virtual work. And so we want to write down all the forces and the displacements here. So let's look at all the forces that are going to contribute to work done here. So clearly, uh, AX and AY contribute no work because there is no displacement there. So I don't need to include them in, in my analysis. Uh, what about P and Q? So if you think about it, P and Q are the two forces. And what about uh, the reaction N? So AX, AY, no displacement, right? And N, uh, if you look at it, also no vertical displacement there. 
so that also doesn't need to be accounted for so the only contributions to uh, work done seem to be P and Q, right? And so let's write down what P and Q are. So I'm going to write down in vector notation, P in vector notation is negative uh, P times J, right? Because it's acting in the y direction downwards. Uh, Q is, is going to be negative Q times I because it's acting in the negative direction uh, along the X. And so I'm going to see. Uh, I'm going to now say that my virtual work is going to be um, minus q i and the dot product with uh, the displacement vector, which is x two minus x one, x two minus x one i, right? And similarly uh, for uh, for the work done by force p, it's going to be negative p times j dot y2 minus y1 dot j okay uh, and so so now we want to evaluate this aspect here right so let's let's see how to do that so i'm going to now um uh, uh simplify it so let me just write it down here du equals to minus q um uh, times x2 minus x1 because we have uh, they're acting both along the x direction and then I have minus p times y2 minus y1 right? so let's calculate what x2 minus x1 and y2 minus y1 are so x2 minus x1 x2 minus x1 the magnitude of that is delta xb right? and um, and so uh, in order to apply the virtual work we need to now figure out how we can get the value of delta xb from known lens here so let me now show you what we do here. So now let's look at uh, what delta xb is. Delta xb is nothing but um, it's going to be related to uh, to our xb through the following uh, transformation. Uh, let's, let me just make sure that we have. Here. So uh, here is xb. So if you look at xb, we can see that it's the projection of this arm onto the x-axis. That is l. Uh, cos theta uh, and this arm as well so we have 2L cos theta okay. and so now you see that if I find out delta xb here if I write down delta xb we are taking the derivative here I'm going to find that it is going to be given by uh, 2 times L times sine theta d theta so delta xb is 2 times L times um, okay hold on a second so did I make a mistake here so it should be sine theta sorry the cos is this angle here okay. so this is sine theta so this will be 2L cos theta d theta okay so that's my delta xb similarly I can write down uh, my um, delta y or the change here y2 minus y1 so y2 minus y1 is delta y and I'm going to write that, write that down in terms of yc here. Okay. Uh, so I'll call it yc. So yc is given by L times cos theta. So delta yc is nothing but minus L sine theta d theta. Okay. So uh, so that's what we have here. Now um, now let's go back and take these quantities here and put them into equation one so let's call this equation one okay and let's think about it so remember that um, if I look at force P what should be the sign of the work done by it well uh, remember du equals uh, f dot dr now here we have a force of magnitude P and it is compressing the distance from uh, from the point C to the ground. That means the change in dr uh, the, the, the is, is actually it's actually compressing it. So that means it's an opposite sign uh, to an extension which should have given us a positive uh, positive uh, work done because when the force and displacement are along the same direction, then you get a positive work done. But in this case, the force uh, and displacement since it's compressive, so you can think of the force and displacement being in. Uh, in opposite direction that means alpha is equal to pi 
and so the sign of the work done by uh, p uh, dot delta y should actually be a negative value right so now when I go back and I look at delta y c in the context of y2 minus y1 uh, I see that I have to make sure that uh, since p and y2 minus y1 are in opposite directions I end up getting a negative term for this work done here right so now let's go ahead and uh, do this so I'm going to say that my delta u now uh, du now is going to look like this. It's going to be um, minus 2 q l times cos theta d theta uh, or or you can say delta theta if, if you're comfortable with that um, minus a uh, plus p l uh, sine theta d theta. And so the minus sign comes here because now you're taking into account the fact that your decrease in length there is, is going to have a negative sign. And so that's what we have. So now uh, we know that according to principle of virtual work, this is going to be zero. Right? And so when I equate that and I rewrite the terms, this is equal to zero. And so that tells me that uh, basically if I uh, reorganize this, I find that Q equals half P tan theta okay so that gives me the approach of virtual work in finding out what um, what the reaction force Q is uh, under the application of force P for this vice or for this machine now question is uh, can you do it can you do it using the equilibrium approach right can you do it using using Sigma F X sigma fy and sigma m equals zero approach and the answer is yes but much harder so why don't you try this and see if you can uh, uh, do it with uh, with the approach that we have been working on so far and that is really the benefit of uh, the principle of virtual work okay okay let's end our discussion here um, with um, with the fact that um, we want to kind of define what the efficiency of a machine is and so let's go back to this uh, this uh, uh, vice here and now introduce something that we ignored in the previous problem and that is that we ignore the fact that there is a friction force at this um, at this point here we we basically solve that problem assuming that the coefficient of friction was zero but now let's say there is a friction force okay and um, and so now we know that if there's a friction force then if I have a virtual displacement in this direction there must be a friction force acting in that direction called F and this is going to be mu times the vertical force that is being applied um, uh, uh, on the block there right which is going to be related to to this uh, to this force here okay so so let's do that and that gives us uh, what would be happening in a real machine closer to that in real machine what we saw previously was an ideal machine okay so <clears throat> so we have now the force um, which should uh, which is basically going to uh, appear here the friction force mu and so now my uh, total virtual work is going to consist of those two terms from the previous example plus a term that comes due to the friction force and I will leave this as an exercise for you to figure out uh, in terms of the sine and the magnitude uh, uh, as, as this term here where mu is the coefficient of friction P L cos theta D theta right. and so that now turns out to give us that a Q is going to be modified from our original value remember it was for the ideal case it was half P tan theta now we have half P <coughs> tan theta minus mu Okay, so now let's look at what uh, the definition of mechanical efficiency is. It's usually given by the letter eta uh, and it's defined as the output work of an actual machine divided by the output work of an ideal machine. Okay. So this is the ideal machine. Alternatively, it is also thought of as the output work done divided by the input work. Okay. So um, we can actually uh, look at the two cases we've solved the ideal case without friction and the real case with friction 
and calculate what the eta for this this particular example is uh, in the following way so our uh, output work done um, was what uh, was basically uh, given by the work done by this force here right uh, by this reaction force here so there is 2 ql cos theta d theta on the other hand the input work being done is is basically the work done by this force here which is uh, pl sin theta d theta so you compress down here uh, that's the input work and the virtual work is this one moves out and that gives you 2l cos theta so our efficiency for this machine is is given by uh, this uh, function here okay okay so uh, with that let's wrap up chapter 10 I know it went through fast, but we will solve some example problems uh, to give you more uh, comfort, uh, comfort with uh, comfort with uh, solving problems with virtual work. In addition, you have some homework problems coming up, so um, so I think you will be uh, you will uh, start getting some sense of why it is useful to understand this principle of virtual work. Right, and the idea is really that you know when you have um, a machine. It's often easier to use this principle of virtual work by virtual displacements and calculating the total work to be zero to find some of the unknown reactions that are appearing in the system. Okay, okay. Uh, so with that, uh, we have uh, finished our content for this uh, for this class, and now we will focus on um, you know uh, basically working through examples from various parts of the text. Thank you.